Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I want to do a wrap up but this one will be a little bit different it's not a wrap up of one month of reading but of multiple months I will start from February until the end of August and that's because I couldn't read much uh, from February until July because I was writing my thesis and focusing on school and work so I didn't had the opportunity to read much and to finish many books unfortunately um, but the moment I was done with my thesis, I got back into reading and in July I read a couple of books, uh, finished two and in August I it was the best reading month so far. So I'm just going chronologically from month to month and talk about the books that I had finished in that month and then the biggest month will be August. But yeah, it's a little bit of a different wrap up than you are used to. So in February I didn't read or I didn't I did read but I haven't finished any book. Started reading House of Leaves. That didn't turn out the way I planned. Um so I stopped reading it for a while and then I read some other books but I didn't finish anything. And then in March I finished two books. First one is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is a children's novel and it's about the girl Coraline who moves in uh, into a new house with her family with her mother and father and in this house she discovers a parallel world uh, that seems the same but it's different it's much darker it has a sinister creature living in it and yeah I just I, I love this book uh, I, at least I love the idea of this book I would have loved it when I was a child uh, but at that time I didn't know Neil Gaiman and I think it wasn't published then well maybe it was it's quite an older story of his um, and it's very popular. It was first published in 2002. I didn't read much at that time. <laughs> uh, I was too little I think. But yeah I would have loved this one in uh, my childhood. For now it was just a fun read. Neil Gaiman is not only a children, children's author. He also writes books for adults and I think even like mythical and history related books. So yeah, that's, uh, it's an author to check out. I like his way of writing. Then another book, uh, it's a philosophical work and it's uh, on anarchism by Noam Chomsky. And I love this one. Uh, it's full of my annotations and uh, I have learned a lot of things reading it. Uh, it does focus, like a big part of the book focuses on the uh, Spanish civil war and on the change of regime in Spain at the time and uh, the anarchistic movement at the, at the time but it also talks about power and government and just anarchism in general so it's a very interesting read and I gave it five stars uh, Noam Chomsky um, is really good at explaining why anarchism was so important uh, to the Spanish people at the time but also what anarchism is uh, in general because it's a term that is misunderstood very often and used in the wrong way. Uh, so he explains his view of anarchism and how a lot of other anarchistic writers and philosophers have uh, yeah, what, what their contribution was in the field. And I'm interested in more of his work. I have also his other book which is uh, On Power. I want to read that one but it's a little bit uh, heavier, like uh, a longer book as well. But he has also written a book on language which I do not own but I'm very excited to read it. So yeah, Noam Chomsky is probably someone that I will read more often. Then in May I only finished one book, uh, which was uh, Farewell to Arms by Ernst Hemingway. And this one was a book club read for A Game of Tomes. It's a very interesting book club uh, on YouTube, hosted by Emmy and Caroline Reeds. And this one was the pick for uh, May. I think it was the pick for May. Maybe it was for March, because I'm very late with the readings of the book club. I also was supposed to read another book, which was also about war, but I only read this one. And this was the first book that I had read by Hemingway. And I was positively surprised, even though I don't like uh, books about war and like the history of war. I always try to avoid those kind of subjects. It just uh, doesn't really interest me that much. But uh, this one was beautifully written. We follow this American soldier and medic. He's, he's for, first of all, he's a medic, but he's working like a medic soldier in the Italian army. And that's because he was studying in Italy uh, and living in Italy. And then the First World War uh, broke out and he had to 
yeah, enlist in the army. And in here he talks about his views on war and at first he's like very patriotic and he's thinking about winning this war. He talks about this with older soldiers uh, and he's, a, he's an officer. So he's a higher rank and then the people under him, the soldiers, they are not always free at speaking out their mind but some of them do and most of them are against this war and they are not patriotic at all and they talk about how Americans are so patriotic in this war even though people are dying for nothing. That, that Those were some of the views in the Italian army in the story and uh, he's at first he doesn't understand this way of thinking but then things go on, people die and he starts to see that this war is not leading to anything, that there are no winners and he also meets this uh, lovely girl that he falls in love with. <laughs> um, but of course, because the war is going on, they have a lot of trouble uh, being together and marrying and all things related. So um, yeah, this book is about love, about his, uh, like this philosophical view on what is war and why it's necessary and actually why it's unnecessary. And I just like the writing. And because this is my first book of Hemingway, I love to read more of his work. If the writing is the same, I probably will love it. So um, I think I give this one four stars. There are some moments that I didn't find very interesting and that's because I'm not interested in war and in war tactics. But there were also moments in here that were very suspenseful. And it was the only book that I was able to finish in May. Then in July, I read two books. Uh, one of them was Submission by Michelle Hollebeck. I didn't like that one. It was about this... Um, I think English professor or no, French professor in France or he got to be a professor somewhere in the book but um, the whole story was focused on how intellectual he was even though at the end of the story I was really doubting that uh, because the choices that he made were quite weird uh, his ideas were not that intellectual at all and also just like the whole plot of the story wasn't interesting to me uh, the ending was a weird way of ending the book in my opinion and also I did just didn't like the character so um, I gave that book two stars. The second book that I finished in July was Gwendy's Magic Feather and it's the second part to the Gwendy's Box trilogy that is written by Stephen King and uh, Richard Gismar and this one is only written by Richard uh, so Stephen King has written the first book and the third book but not this one. Uh, it does contain the foreword of Stephen King. And yeah, it was just nice to get back into the world of Gwendy and her adventures with the button box. But uh, this book felt very unfinished for me. So I think I, I also gave this one three stars. Uh, even though it started out good, uh, there were here, I think, three stories that uh, were simultaneously important. Uh, but they all three didn't really finish. So we had the story of the button box. And that one was just very random. Uh, she got the button box again and we don't really know why. It was like a random moment. And at the end there is like an explanation for it. But uh, it isn't really good. So uh, that story felt really unfinished. Then we have Gwendy who is now a grown up. She's in her 30s. She has a political function. And there's this uh, thing going on with the president. And with the elections and with the country and then there is the serial killer <laughs> that's all of the sudden there and it's a problem and towards the end we suddenly go to the conclusion of finding the serial killer and everything so i didn't like how things were rushed towards the end and it felt unfinished and now we're going into the best reading month of this year so far it's august the last month in this wrap up and uh, the first book that i had finished was uh, the fisherman by john Lennon. this one was uh, laying around on my bookshelves for I think like two years and I always thought like oh I need to read it because it was like the most talked about novel I think in 2021 or something uh, and everyone was mentioning it and a lot of good reviews came out of it so I was very excited to read it um, and now finally I did read it and yes it's good it's really good uh, it's a book that I cannot really put in on genre it's uh, obviously it contains horror but in my opinion it is also literary fiction and there is some dark fantasy in it we start out with this character that has a very dark past he had lost his partner and the love of his life and right now he's just focused on his career and trying to just survive uh, in his misery then he discovers fishing so fishing becomes his new hobby and that's when he can just clear his mind go fishing and try not to think about 
the sadness in his life. And there is this other co-worker at his work. And uh, what kind of work they do is not very important. Uh, I think it's something with business and like a big company. Um, and there is this other co-worker that is uh, quite young and he just started working there and he's really uh, taking one promotion after another. He is always the first to come into the office and always the last to go. Just a very good worker. He has uh, a wife and two children uh, and yeah, his life is just perfect. But then something happens uh, and now they have more in common with each other. And eventually uh, our main character asks him to go fishing with him. So they are starting to go on these fishing trips together. And that's what where we start out with. And I think in the first 18 pages, I already uh, noticed how... Uh, good descriptions of the characters uh, were and how um, much I was involved with their lives. So on page 18 when we read about like very tragic things that happen, I was really like saddened by it. And it's a book that's very vividly written. So you really feel what kind of things happen to them and uh, you're really rooting for them uh, to go through the situations that they encounter. So I, I, I love this book. But then it doesn't stop there. So it's not only that they're going on this fishing trip and something weird happens and their tragic lives. Uh, it's more than that. At one point they find this fishing spot, a location that is not on the maps or like the newer co-worker uh, who is going on the fishing trips with him from now on. He finds his spot and he mentions it and he wants to go there. Our main character has never heard about the sport but he is like willing to try it out. And when they're uh, going there, they um, stop at this bar that they always stop at and just uh, get some lunch. And then they hear the story about this fishing spot. And then all of a sudden we're in the narrative of the barman who is telling the story. And then the narrative changes again. And so it continues. We read a lot of perspectives. It is a story within a story within a story. So I, I like this concept, but it does mean that you have to read it with a lot of concentration or else you will like not understand what the, where the story is going. It did give me like this House of Leaf vibes because of the uh, fact that it's a story in a story. It, it doesn't contain much more resemblance to House of Leaves, but it does give gave me that vibe. And towards the end, it goes more into dark fantasy. There are things happening that's even too weird for horror. It's more like a... A fantasy novel at some point or like a myth or a legend that you're reading i would recommend this to anyone who is like a fan of horror uh, or dark fiction literary fiction so check this one out then we are going uh, to continue with horror and this one is also quite good it's i am legend by richard madison uh, most people are familiar with the movie with will smith uh, that's the one that i have watched as well i didn't really like the movie it was it was okay but it wasn't as good as the story is so if you didn't like or did like the movie it doesn't really matter i would still recommend to read this book it's uh, very short but it contains a lot of ideas uh, that are new in horror i think and uh, this is like a vampire story that is different from dracula it's um, it has its own twist to it and actually i would say it doesn't even center around vampires the vampires are not the biggest part in the story the biggest part of this book focuses on loneliness uh on a human being that is left alone there's no one that is like him anymore he doesn't feel connected to people he lost everything that he had ask himself day in day out why should he continue on living. He still has the will to survive, even though he doesn't really know why. And once in a while he gets this spark of hope when something happens, when he encounters another human being or a dog. It's like very tragic to see how much joy a dog brings him at that moment and how scared he is to lose it and how he just loses his mind to help this dog. Uh, because he doesn't have anyone else. So the dog and human relation in here is much better than the movie. It's not horror anymore. It's more like a philosophical, philosophical work about someone who is thinking about his past and about what the world has become and what his place in it is. Um, he doesn't see himself surviving in this kind of world all on his own. And he talks about this. So it's it's a very interesting concept. And I would actually love to read more from Richard Madison. I think the next book that I'm going to read from him is Hell House. 
which is also quite famous but uh, this was a delight to read honestly i would recommend it to anyone it's between horror and science fiction in because we're talking about the future and it's like this dystopian world but i think it is more horror than it is science fiction and i think it's more philosophy than it is horror then uh, another very short book uh, and also a classic it's the case of dr jekyll and mr hyde by robert louis stevenson just a good read it's a classic and it's a classic for a reason it explores the difference between good and evil and how uh, good and evil lives in all of us uh, and in this book evil gets a person so it's not a an uh, abstract definition it's a person that uh, lives in the tide us like a side of us that is evil so and then it comes to life in the novel so it's very interesting and it's one of the books that i also wanted to read just like dracula frankenstein and dr jekyll and mr hyde so now i finally have read this one and uh, i read it in english and i was surprised i thought it was a very short book so it would be easy to read but no, <laughs> it was quite difficult because the language in here is a little bit older than the English that we are used to now. So it was a challenge. Uh, I had to look up some of the words, but it was still very interesting and um, I would recommend this one. And then a very short book as well. Uh, this one I finished in two days, uh, but very interesting. It, it's Fear and Trembling by Emily Notom. Notom. <laughs> I think I'm not pronouncing her name right, but she's a Belgian Frank French speaking writer um, and she has lived uh, a part a big part of her life in Japan and most of her work focuses around that as I understand but I wanted to read this book because I have seen the movie when I was a child uh, with the same title Fear and Trembling and it was about this Belgian girl that got an opportunity to work in Japan in a major company and she always, it was her dream because uh, she uh, was born in Japan, her parents worked there and then she moved countries and eventually she ended up in Belgium again. But she always wanted to come back to the country that was her, in her opinion, the country that she was born in and her um, fatherland. So she wanted to go back there and work for a Japanese company and when she achieved it, she wanted to work there as a translator or an interpreter. Um, doesn't really matter but uh, she got a, a nice function there but she couldn't function there <laughs> so she dropped uh, from one task to another down to the lowest task that she could do at the company uh, she had a horrible boss and a horrible manager that should have guided her um, but they were not horrible people they were just they had to act this way to survive in this company and towards the end she it's it's not a sad ending uh whatsoever it is a good ending but like a motivational ending but there are a lot of funny elements in here like some of the stories that she tells here you wouldn't believe if someone told you that those kinds of things happen at your work so i i love this one it's just as good as the movie i actually would say this is much better than the movie uh because uh it, it gives more explanation to the situations the movie is just entertaining uh so yeah read this book if you have seen the movie and you liked it or if you're interested in japan and but you have to understand that this is just one opinion of someone uh it's a work of fiction but it's kind of based on her experience working in japan as um like the, the writer's experience working in japan uh, but it's just, it, it's a different time. This all happened in the 90s. And also it differs with every company. So it doesn't mean that it is everywhere like this in Japan. Uh, but it's just an interesting read about someone experiences. And I think that's very important that people write about their experiences. And then uh, the rest of my August reads were non-fiction. I finally finished uh, The Penguin Book of Hell, which I started two years ago, almost two years ago. It took me a while. It is a non-fiction about all kinds of texts throughout our history that describes hell from a Christian perspective, but also from ancient Greece and uh, the Babylonian times. So there are a lot of texts in here, mostly are from the Bible. But there's also a whole uh, like passage on Dante's Inferno. Um, so it was very interesting, but also a lot of information. So it took me a very long time to get through it. But I would recommend it if you're into history and especially into how um, hell played a very big role in history and literature. And the author, 
uh, Scott G. Bruce. He's a professor of history in America and he has written another book which is the Penguin Book of the Undead and it's more about the supernatural and the undead in throughout the history. So I would like to read that one too. But this one was already quite an eye-opener about how uh, hell is a major part of our life without us knowing it. Uh, we use it in our references, we use it in our metaphors. So um, yeah, I would recommend it if you're into those kind of historical texts. Then I have two more books to discuss and both of them are again non-fiction and uh, books that I really enjoyed. So this one is Abroad in Japan written by Chris Broad, who is a YouTuber that makes videos about Japan and documentaries about Japan. And this book is like a personal memoir of his first 10 years in the land of the rising sun as it says i made a whole review video about this one you can check it out but in summary i would say it's a really good book about the experiences of a person in japan and uh, how he started out working there as an english teacher and then uh, started his own youtube channel and how this that gave him a lot of opportunities to really discover japan and how japan changed his life so if you're into uh, Japan or you, or you want to uh, work there or live there, check this one out. A lot of English humor in there, uh, sarcasm, but also just very nice stories. And uh, the last one is Monster She Wrote by Lisa Kruger and Kruger and Melanie Anderson. And this one is about women in speculative fiction, uh, horror fiction, gothic fiction. And this one was a very pleasant read. I have discovered a lot of new writers and new books that I have to check out. You can just easily go through it in a couple of days. And they start out with like the earliest woman writers in the field and then um, go towards our own time, our own present time. And I have read some interesting facts about Mary Shelley's life about Shirley Jackson, which is one of my favorite writers of all time. But there are also other writers that I have never heard of, which was also very nice to discover. So this book uh, gave me a lot of uh, interesting books to read and how women were writing in the older days, how they had to manage their writing career and their family life and their other um, responsibilities and tasks. So that one, I, I think the, like the beginning part of the book is more focused on those kind of problems. But another thing that I would say about this book is that I was missing female writers from other countries except from like uh, England and America and some European countries. I miss like countries like Japan or China or Russia for that matter. It, like a lot of countries were not in here and I think they also had female writers. So this is mostly focused on European writers and American writers. And towards the end, they do mention some Japanese writers from uh, nowadays, but not the ones that they had in the past. <laughs> so that would be the only thing that I would say. Uh, but for the rest, I really like the nonfiction books that I have read. And this was everything uh, from March, February, March until August. And I'm very happy that I got back into reading. So I'm looking forward to read more and discover more amazing writers. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and uh, let me know what book you have read in August that you really loved. And maybe give me some good recommendations for the future. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.